I've spent way too much time staring at Outer Wilds now, over 800 hours, so I might as well make a video talking about how the game works. Outer Wilds takes place almost entirely within a single level, excluding the ending and like, the title screen. Each planet in Outer Wilds is fully explorable. The game makes the most of each planet with things to see not only on the surface or in orbit, but also inside the planets themselves. When you make your way to the core of a planet, you are in the core of the planet in the game scene. There's no trickery going on where it's hiding a loading screen or teleporting you to a separate location or anything like that. With one notable exception. Dark Bramble is, in the game's lore, not a planet. The fifth planet in the solar system was some big icy rock, uh, potentially with some sort of subsurface ocean filled with jellyfish, but has since exploded, revealing this giant vining plant that grew out of the interior. Entering into the foggy center of this plant, you find yourself in a pocket dimension much larger than the seed that you came in through. Within each node, there are more seeds which lead you deeper into other dimensions. There are eight different interior nodes in total, connected by these seeds that teleport you between them. Each node is about three kilometers wide, comparable to the size of the sun in the game. So how does this actually work? Well, for starters, Outer Wilds avoids having to do as much camera trickery as you'd see in a game like Portal by obscuring the entrances to each node in a layer of fog. And once the fog has fully covered your screen, the game is free to teleport you to a new location to simulate you entering the new node. Now these nodes aren't like new levels or anything like that. They exist physically in the main game scene at all times, but they're deactivated for the most part. Now Outer Wilds is a pretty computationally intensive game since it has all these planets existing all at once with details and props all over each planet. And if it had to simulate that all at once, it'd be pretty taxing on your computer. So the game gets around this by altering the level of detail of each planet depending on how far away the player is from that planet. However, the game also has to take into account your scout launcher, which you can take pictures through. So it can't lower the detail of a location where you've left your scout, else you'll end up being able to take pictures of low polygon terrain. Now, the game also disables collisions on certain planets if you're on around, but again, it has to take into account the fact that your scout could be flying towards that planet, or you could have left your ship somewhere, so it can't just deactivate the collisions and have your ship sink into the ground. In short, if you or your scout are somewhere, it has to remain visible the entire time, and if you, your scout, or your ship is somewhere, it also has to remain tangible the entire time. That is, the collision meshes can't be deactivated. So this brings in an interesting issue. When you're outside of Dark Bramble, the interior pocket dimensions are deactivated, it's fine, you can't see them, they're not there. But when you fly into it, of course they get activated, but now you know, you're inside, so it doesn't matter. But if you simply launch your scout into Bramble, you're able to take pictures of the inside. So it has to be activated even though you're still outside in space. So where is it? In Timber Hearth's northern hemisphere, there's a Bramble seed which has crash landed onto the planet and started to grow. The opening is too small for you to enter, but you can shoot your scout into it. Now, if we were to move over to the southern hemisphere of the planet, we suddenly see this giant black sphere floating in space, and that's where the Bramble Dimensions are. I guess the hope was for you to not stick around Timber Hearth after this, and instead go straight to Dark Bramble to investigate where your probe has disappeared to. If we go ahead and use the free cam mod to move our camera inside the black sphere, we see the Bramble Dimension has been loaded in, and our scout is in here somewhere, and if we recall our scout, the sphere suddenly vanishes. Now, putting the scout back into the node, we can try flying the ship over. Just let me, uh, just let me, trying to, trying to shoot, so I'll get it, I'll get it, okay, got it, that was easy. Flying over, we see that there is a repulsive force around the black sphere, preventing you from flying too close to it. We recall the scout again, we're able to fly freely by. Again, this is because the collision detection of Dark Bramble has to be loaded in when there's something in there, so you can't let the ship you know, fly in and start interacting with that, so they don't let the player enter that area at all. Now why isn't Bramble farther away? 
I mean, we can see this from the surface of Timber Hearth. Sure, they've hidden it under the plane of the solar system, but they could have put it farther out. Uh, an issue that Outer Wilds can have is floating point error. Uh, as objects get more distant from the player, their physics calculations get less accurate. Maybe the devs wanted to avoid having the Bramble Dimension doing improper physics calculations by having it be really far away. I guess, you know, it's what's the worst possible outcome? Potentially seeing this ominous sphere in the sky or having Bramble be placed further out, but when you travel into Dark Bramble and come back out, you might end up seeing something like this because the physics calculations have become inaccurate. Uh, so that's it then. The inside of Dark Bramble is contained in a black sphere underneath the plane of the solar system, completely viewable from the surface of Timber Hearth, and they cover up that you're teleporting into it by covering your screen in fog and just crossing their fingers that you're not going to notice the ominous void in the distance. So thanks for watching. I know this is a bit different from my channel. I tend to do just mods or making stuff in Godot or something like that, but I felt like you know maybe I could talk about a video game talk a bit about how a game does something interesting so if you want to see more stuff like that in the future uh, let me know I don't know like the video uh, give me money I just, I don't know okay bye